In this video, I'll walk you through how to read and write Excel files in .NET Core. You can use this method in any .NET Core application, but I'll be demonstrating it using an ASP.NET Core Web API project. I'll show you how to upload an Excel file and import the data. Additionally, we'll be able to download the data from our database as an Excel file, and that too in a well-formatted manner. So, let's get started. First, let me give you an overview of our project. Before that, I want to let you know that the source code for this project is available in our Patreon community, where you can download and refer to it. Join our community to level up your skills and take advantage of exclusive benefits. In our program class, I've set up a database connection using Entity Framework Core, and I've also created a repository service called Member Repository. In the database, we have a table for saving members, which currently doesn't contain any data. We also have a hosted service named Excel Data Import Service, which will handle the import process in the background. This service utilizes .NET Core channels, which I've covered in a previous video. You can refer to this video to learn more about background services and channels. Whenever an import request is received, the service will call the do work method of the Excel data import worker, which we'll be implementing shortly in this video. As for the request model class, it contains just three properties. Request ID, which is a unique ID for each request. File data, which holds the Excel file's memory stream. And has header, a Boolean property to indicate whether the Excel file contains a header row. To work with Excel files, we need to install the necessary library from NuGet packages. We'll be using Closed XML, which is a popular library for reading, manipulating, and writing Excel files. Now, let's start with our API controller. First, I'll create an API method for uploading the Excel file. This method accepts an upload request object, which has two properties, the file to import and a Boolean value has header. Once the method is executed, we return an upload response object, which contains the unique request ID, file name, and file size. First, we'll check if the file is null and, if so, return a bad request response. Next, let's create a new unique request ID. Then, I'll create a new Excel data import request. We'll assign the has header property and copy the file into file data property as a memory stream. Once the import request is ready, we can write it to the channel. Finally, we return the upload response object by assigning values for the request ID, file name, and file size. Let's also make sure to provide the HTTP POST attribute for this method. Once the request is written to the channel, the do work method of the Excel data import worker will be triggered. This is the sample Excel file we'll be uploading. It contains five columns. We'll read all the rows except the first one as it's a header row. Now, let me create a private method for reading the data. This method will return a list of members. We'll start by creating an object of Excel workbook and pass the file stream as a parameter. As you know, an Excel file can have multiple worksheets. We can define the worksheet by either providing the position or the sheet name. In this case, I'll use the position. Next, we'll iterate through the rows using a 4 h loop. We can skip the first row if has header is set to true. Within the 4 h loop, we'll add new member objects to the list, reading each property from the cell values. For string values, we can use the getString method. And since the age property is an integer, we'll read that value as an integer. Now, in our do work method, we'll fetch the members using the newly created method and save them to the database. Lastly, we'll implement some logging so we can see the file import details in the console window. Let's test the method by running the application. I'm setting the has header value to true and uploading the file. We can now see the logs in the console window. The process has been completed. Let's check the database. And as expected, the data has been successfully imported. All 5,000 members have been imported. Now, in the API controller, let's implement the method 
for downloading the data as an Excel file. This will be an HTTP GET method. Inside this method, we'll create a new Excel workbook object. Then, let's add a worksheet and name it Members. Next, we'll add the first row of header cells. The first cell will contain first name. In the same way, I've added the other column values as well. Now, we'll fetch the entities from our repository. We'll loop through the received members using a 4 each loop. Let's also declare a row index, starting from 2. Then, for each member, we'll assign the values for each column. We'll increment the row index before moving to the next member. Once all members are added, we'll create a memory stream object and save the workbook to the memory stream. We'll then reset the position of the memory stream to the start. Finally, we return the file, providing the content type for Excel files. You can copy this directly from the source code. And we can also specify a name for the downloaded file. Now, while running the application, you can see the new get method in Swagger. Let's give it a try. Execution completed. Let me download and open the file. In the Excel file, we can see the complete data from our database. We can also apply self-formatting, such as styling, to customize the appearance of the data within the spreadsheet. I've made some changes and let me download the file again. Now, you can see that the header row has red font color and is underlined. You can refer to the source code in our Patreon community to understand more about styling. Join our community to level up your skills and take advantage of exclusive benefits. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. See you all in the next video. Thank you.